thank you very much for inviting me and what a lovely uh, introduction. Let's hope all the technology works and I can live up to that introduction. Um, the first thing to say I think about doing this, I'm speaking today but impact is never done um, in isolation. So all of the stuff that I talk about I really should be saying and Catherine Runswick Hall and Dan Goodley and Caroline Kagan and Wai Yin and a host of other people. So think of me as the voice, the mouthpiece if you like, but the work that goes on is really behind much, much of that, okay? So it's always done in collaboration. The first image, I don't know if any of you saw this exhibition, it's an exhibition that did travel around called Extraordinary Measures and this is an artist called Slinkachu who does very, very tiny little sculptures. So that, around that is actual size grass and plants. And he does very tiny sculptures that you have to locate and look at in wonderment. And I thought it was a fitting uh, image to get us thinking about impact, which doesn't always have to be massive. I've spoken to the PM and he's agreed. It can be small things that we do on a daily basis. So I wanted to get you thinking about how to to celebrate impact, how to use impact in your work from the off so that you're thinking in an impactful way. Okay. Impact is often defined, I think, in a very powerful way as force or effect. And historically, it was known very much around personal esteem. So academics used to think about themselves as um, their academic reputation and the impact that they had. These days, I think there's a shift towards much more thematic impact, ideas that impact really stems from working with networks of others in collaboration with others. So it's much more about what are the effects of undertaking this type of research, and they can be through from social effects, through to health, through to policy, through to commercial ones. Now you know from doing your research training that research itself, whenever we study something, we change it. So uh, kind of un understanding that in and of itself as an, as an essential point means that impact is purely just the trying to look at what that process is. So it's acknowledging that what we do changes, transforms in some way, and then mapping and understanding and evaluating that. So that's the, the, the kind of the trend, I think, currently, which is to try and look at not just doing research for research's sake, but understanding how research translates and transforms lives. Now, there's lots of contestation in the literature about whether impact is a noun or a verb. And I've heard some people say, I hate that word, to impact. Um, and actually, it, it should really be a noun. Um, but actually, achieving impact is about the process and the content. It's about engaging in good quality research. And of course, then translating that into something which does shift or transform thinking, policy, practice, lives, behavior. Um, impact in contemporary understanding is really gaining um, a huge amount of power, I think. Our latest research um, excellence framework exercise wanted to evaluate impact to, to the tune of 20% of the marks that we get. And yes, as academics, we still get marked and we still get assessed. It never goes away. Um, and that's predicted to increase when we next have our quality assessment of our research. Now, I'm, I'm arguing that when we collaborate with people, we're doing impact anyway. And the way that I have been thinking and my colleagues have been thinking about impact is about engagement and collaboration. I think it's about saying as academics, we don't have all the answers. What we know works in the academy, but sure as eggs is eggs, we need for other people to make that collaboration, to make that knowledge transform into something a bit more useful. So I want to talk to you much more about the doing of the impact and try to hopefully stimulate some ways that you can think about embedding impact into your work so that you're doing it from the off, so that it's not an add-on. 
Okay, the first thing, this is a, a visual, that's one of these um, photo booth uh, apps. Um, and I think one of the, the problems is that when we think about impact, people think, oh, it's another thing I've got to do on top of my job and add to my to-do list, usually at the bottom. But I think what, what we need to try and do is to try and think through impact as part of the process of engaging. And if we can almost mainstream impact, then we all achieve change change and transformation much more easily. So hopefully you'll be, by the end of today, feeling confident about the impact partners and champions that you can be in the world. Okay, I want to talk about a few different projects just to give you a flavour of some of the ways in which we've been trying to um, look at impact. Um, Research councils now want us, when we're put in for funding bids, to talk about what they call are the pathways to impact. So you're doing this research. If it's blue sky, tell us what change it's going to make and who it's going to affect. So they're asking you right from the off, translate those findings, make them workable. One of the projects that we've done with uh, a Chinese social enterprise in Manchester, Yin, was done using co-production. Now, co-production is a trendy word, really, for collaboration. We've, I think lots of us have been doing co-production, but um, I'm quite happy to jump on the co-production bandwagon if it gets at some funding. But it's really working collaboratively and, I think, working ethically to achieve change. The social enterprise we were working with that we'd done a language uh, learning project with where we were looking at whether everyday people could teach people English language. So we were looking at migrant issues in Manchester. And they also noticed that uh, some of the Chinese people and other migrants they'd been working with were often an undergoing quite difficult work experiences, sometimes within their own Chinese community. And they wanted to try and look at this issue. So the problem arose, if you like, from their issue. It wasn't something that we went as an idea to research. They actually came up with the idea and said this is an issue they wanted to look at. Now, I'm talking very much from a social science perspective, because obviously that's very much my um, area of expertise. But you can see how co-production is really just about chaining, joining, collaborating things together. So uh, when I'm talking about it, I'm talking about participation and action research. But of course, you could achieve these same sorts of things with shared lab space, with knowledge generation, with some of the ideas about how do you transfer forms of knowing. So, I mean, I'm happy to answer questions on some of these other things, but I'm not a hard scientist, you must know. So I don't know if I'll be able to address some of the things. So this project then was done very much with the Chinese um, social enterprise Wai Yin and done very much using principles of co-production. So in order to engage in an impactful way, and we would say that is an, in an ethical way with a values base, we worked with them to develop the research proposal along lines that they thought would work. And then when we won the money, the money was funded by the Joseph Rowntree Foundation, which is a philanthropic trust in the UK. We employed a researcher who of course spoke Chinese, they could speak Mandarin and Cantonese, and we embedded that researcher actually in the host organisation because there's very little point somebody doing a Chinese project just in our setting with no access. So we worked collaboratively from the off to try and think through what would maximise um, the impact and what would maximise the partnership. The issue was around forced or migrant labour. So this is a modern, the modern term is modern slavery, if you've heard of that contemporary term. So it's people for whom work is extracted around debt, around identity threat, um, around being reported to the authorities. So these are people who are often what, what might be called undocumented labourers, who are transferring from one context to another um, but they are, their documents are often taken and they have to pay a fee to the travel facilitator, the snakehead. So they arrive in the UK, often under quite difficult circumstances, some journeys take four years, and they're working below the minimum wage until they pay back their debt. So they're paying back a debt of usually around 20000 Okay. 
So it's, it's very much a particular a sensitive issue and we, we saw very much that we needed to work collaboratively in order to elicit some of these narratives and stories and we wanted to work not just to position them as powerless but also to undertake some of the more sensitive ways of understanding the agency that they'd had in their journeys. Um, we were also mindful that we didn't necessarily um, know an awful lot about Chinese policy. So we also took um, some time to do some policy mapping and to work in conjunction with them to try and understand what was happening back in China in order to understand why people were still coming given the alleged global superpower that China was becoming. Is that okay? Okay. So, all right. Um, w working with this model, we were also um, clear that we wanted to make sure that something uh, was given back in terms of a legacy. So we, uh, through the interviews that we gathered, made an anthology of Chinese and um, English excerpts of some of the experiences that they'd had, which we left around Chinatown to raise consciousness. Okay. What were some of the engagement and impact strategies here? In building partnerships with Yin, we built some of their research capacity. They went on to bid to comic relief around child trafficking. We raised some public awareness of the issue around forced labour. The anthology helped us do that. And at the dissemination events, we used some of the Chinese media. So again, lots of these things. We, we are mindful that we don't have all the skills. And imp impact isn't about a person. Impact is about a network or a group. At the funder level, there was also a, a lead into policy as well, because there were a number of projects that Joseph Roundtree were doing. So that's one project. This is just another quick project that we did, and this wasn't a funded project from a research council. This was done from a disability charity, and this was a scope project, and they wanted to find the magic answer to why disabled people are resilient. Um, and they came to us with this, with this idea, could we bid for it? We, we did indeed bid for it, but we were trying to say resilience is about networks. So again, we worked in conjunction with disabled people's organisations, with SCOPE and with a host of other people at all different stages across the Disability Life Course to try and help us understand what, what was resilience. In this project, I'm not going to talk about this in detail, but we worked using a community of practice idea. So we co-authored some of the reports, we developed capacities and confidences around writing, and we're trying to build, we built a toolkit, which was a paper-based toolkit, which we're now trying to translate into an app that maybe will help people to plot and understand resilience. So it, it, the model here has been very much co-presenting, speaking to practitioners, parents, and disability organisations. And that's something I think that you can try and think about as well in terms of doing impact is sharing knowledge across and enabling other people to build confidence. The, in community psychology, which is where my, my home is, I suppose, we're always trying to look at the bigger picture. And this slide shows us just very briefly that we're all embedded in much wider networks. And so whilst it's nice to look at in the centre at the you, at this personal change, we also need to look outside of ourselves. And this ecosystem tells us that, of course, to achieve change, we need to be targeting bigger fish than just ourselves. So um, it's just a, a warning, if you like. The current project that we're working on is truly um, a collaborative project and here we're working very much with a partnership model where the partners here are getting paid for their time. So these aren't traditional partners as in academic partners, although there are some academic partners as well. Um, Sheffield and Northumbria, but actually we're working with disabled people's organisations and we're paying them to be impact partners, to be impact champions. Um, we're also working with a self-advocacy organisation and they come along to the meetings. So the idea here very much is to try and get some input at a very early stage about how might we translate these findings and is what we're doing useful. 
So that, this has been a really interesting um, model of working um, because people have a lot to say. And if you wait till you've done your research till the end, people usually say, well, you shouldn't have done it like that. Or, oh, that's wrong. You're, no wonder you've got that answer. You should have spoken to him. So this has been really useful. Having them on board from the offset, and they've been involved in the design, they were involved in the bid writing, has meant that we have had their input around how to translate things, whether this makes sense, who should we talk to, where should we go to, right from the offset. And I think in paying them for their time, we've privileged their knowledge as being on a more equal basis. I mean, it's still the money comes into the academy, but the money does at least go out to these settings to pay for work that they do. We've um, also been trying different things. So these are just some ideas. Um, in the, one of the projects we did, we did impact downloadable cards. So to try to maximize um, things that messages that people can take away, we've got on a WordPress site a whole array of these impact downloadable cards that you can check to see whether um, something appeals to you and we link it to an output but it's also accessible and in, in projects we found people download them and say oh that was useful I took that to X with me and I argued for short breaks for example for my for my child so it's quite it's quite a useful way sometimes I think of of, uh, of working the impact um, partners then very much have allowed us to forefront policy and of course that's one of the agendas with impact. We've also in this project had a researcher in residence phase so rather than sitting in the academy we have a, we have a plan for the next bit where the researcher is going to be spending some time with different people in their host organisations to do things which are impactful, which are around building capacity. Um, We've co-produced presentations, so we've got, um, whenever we have events, we make sure that partners come along to speak, so we're not voicing and mouthing things that we think are academic and useful, that they actually get a voice. And we've used, of course, WordPress and Twitter. Twitter dissemination is brilliant for ways of getting uh, messages out there, and I would really recommend that people get on Twitter and try to get knowledgeable about how this is transforming, so that you don't end up like a a, a digi immigrant like me still trying to get to grips with it though managing just about um, I just show you this is the latest thing we've been playing with to uh, try and find a useful way of uh, demonstrating findings bearing in mind we're working with people for whom reading sometimes is a real issue can you hear that let's have a look put this up So that, that, that's just an animation of um, 
a, a way of trying to represent uh, some of the work that we've been engaged with. And what's interesting, we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago and showed that animation, and uh, the group of people with learning difficulties said they hated it and they didn't want to be animated, so we're going to have to change that. But that just shows you, I think, some of the ways of working in collaboration and what you need to do. And we will have to change it. So in one of our researcher in residence phases, we're going to be working to try and make a film that's more appropriate. So this is what's interesting, I think, about the processes, that the, you know, the things that you think are right. And we were really delighted with this, because Catherine's a whiz at stuff. And we're like, oh, that's so lovely. We show it, and they're like, no, rubbish. We don't want that. <laughs> so there we go. Back, back to, back to the drawing board, I think, with that. Okay, so impact tips, I think, then. Try and um, consider your audience and try and think about ways that you can very easily um, build alliances through Twitter, through WordPress, um, through working with your um, supervisors, for example. Generist, generate text for response to different audiences. You need almost a way of writing for practitioners. Is there a practitioner outlet that you could write something <coughs> for about the work that you're already engaged in. Don't wait till you've done it. Write about the work that you're doing. Um, and people will want very different things. So it's about sort of, you know, working through that. This is um, an artist that we've been working with on this project. Again, for people for whom language is difficult, we need some other representations. And he's been working to try and create visual representations of how civil society and austerity is, uh, is working against disabled people. Impact starts with research. It's not an add-on. You are, you are engaging in impact when you begin your research. And whether that's funded research where you can budget for impact and you can think about it in terms of co-production or impact partners, but even at PhD level, uh, somebody's just finished a PhD uh, with me and he did an exhibition, he had a creative and artistic legacy, he's been tweeting about it, he's done a blog. There are lots of ways I think you can add stuff to the work that you're already engaged in without it being seen as something you do at the end. Uh, lastly, just to say, the Festival of Social Science events, of which we've got two this week <coughs> that we're involved with, um, one is on disability and austerity, and that's on tomorrow evening at Burley, and there's one on Saturday, which is community psychology and community arts, and that's on on Saturday afternoon. Those are great ways, again, of outward facing, engaging people in ways in which social science research impacts on lives. Again, consider your supervisors. Do they want to get involved in that? Because that be something you could work on with them. Impact is here to stay um, and I think it's probably just going to grow in importance and whether you like the Margaret Mead quote, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful committed citizens can change the world, indeed it's the only thing that ever has, or Barack Obama's, we are the change that we seek. Undoubtedly engaging in research is going to change some facet of life and you need to think about what that is but also you need to get on board and start to tweet and blog and shout about it because that what you know we, we also want to say we are interested in people and science and we want to make a difference so thank you very much for listening